Hard to Remax Series schedule. It's the home track of ARCA and home to some of the most intense short track stock car racing in the nation. Here it's door to door, bumper to bumper, lap after lap. Patience is a must, but often runs out. Frank Kimmel and Ken Schrader have mastered this place over the years with 13 wins between the two. But this time, it could be different. With seven different winners in the first seven events this season, today it just may be one of ARCA's newest faces who makes it to victory lane. 200 laps from Toledo start right now. Welcome to Toledo, Ohio for the Hans Group 200 from Toledo Speedway. It's race number eight of the 2007 season for the ARCA Remax Series. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Allen alongside of Phil Parsons. A little bit of a homecoming for you, Phil. You grew up about 45 miles north of here in Detroit. And actually, I guess you would say a little bit of a homecoming for Frank Kimmel and Ken Schrader. They have been dominant on this racetrack. They sure have. The last 16 races here, they, between them, have won 13 of them. <laughs> but there's a lot of hot young talent here. We've got Billy Leslie and Brian Keselowski, both second-generation drivers, sons of former ARCA Remax Series champions that have already won this year. And they're going to be joined by Justin Allgaier and Bobby Gerhardt, all kinds of great competition here at Toledo and one other guy we can't count as the guy who won the poll and that was Michael McDowell and a lot of polls for him already in 2007 one guy who had a little bit of difficulty yesterday was Frank Kimmel in practice he went out early on and actually got into the wall in turns three and four and did this damage to his car so much damage that they had to get out a backup car that has not raced in over two years so they definitely have the work cut out for him to try to get win number 10 for Frank Kimmel Frank Kimmel was able to go out and make one lap of qualifying he qualified at 16th and so he'll He'll have to start in the middle of the field to try to make it 10 wins at Toledo. Let's go to Jim Trado. And Rick, while it's a bit of an unknown for this backup car, they changed the shocks, the gear, the fuel cell in the carburetor from the primary car. They already had the springs on the car to make it work, but they are a little bit concerned about how this car is going to perform because they just had one single lap on this car yesterday. The car was impounded. They couldn't do a lot of changes. One good note on their side, car owner Larry Clement told me before the race, the last time Frank Kimmel wiped out a primary car was in practice at Winchester about six years ago, rolled out the backup and won that race guys yeah thanks Jim I tell you what one other good thing that you can think about with Frank Kimmel is his successes at Toledo take a look at those stats that is amazing since 1994 there have only been four different winners at Toledo Speedway and Frank's won nine of those races and let's head back down track side to Don Radebaugh Ken Trader is three for three in the win column in his last three attempts here at Toledo Speedway and that was from starting in the back Trader you finally got to qualify you qualified 10th does that simplify your life today uh, you you know, it'd be a little simpler to start 10th. Problem is, uh, all the cars that uh, are in front of us keep getting a little faster every year, and the field just gets tighter and tighter. But uh, we'll run around first three fourths this race, try to keep fenders on, and see what we got at the end. Ken Trader will make his 44th career ARCA Remax Series start here today. He rolls off outside row five. Well, thank you, Don. We take a look at the seven races we've run this season, and look at that list. Seven different names again, Phil. That's amazing that we've had five first-time runners winners this year in the ARCA Remax Series. Bobby Garrett won Daytona for the 47th consecutive time, and then, <laughs> and then Brian Keselowski won his second career ARCA Remax Series race. And what an amazing run for Scott Legacy at Kansas. He and Eric Darnell battling side by side pretty much the last five, six laps of that race, and Scott Legacy gets the win. Well, before we get this one underway, we've got to fire the engine. So let's go back track side where the VP of recruiting for Hans Group will give us today's command. There we go, and they're going to fire him up, ladies and gentlemen. We get ready to go for our 200 laps in a Hans Group. The engines are fired. Linda Bar Horny Tucker. doing an excellent job giving the command. And we do have one woman in the field today, Gabby DiCarlo. So it was, ladies and gentlemen, fire your engines. And they are all fired up. They will be getting ready to roll out onto this half mile bull ring that we call Toledo Speedway. Let's go back down to Jim Trado. You do whatever you want, I'm here. He has the pole Michael McDowell has the same car he won the pole at Salem and Winchester with. However, it's the setup he applied from Lakeland with his crew chief, Patrick Donahue, when they tested and saw the track for the very first time just one week ago. It's put him on the pole, but he hopes the setup and what they did here in testing will back up for their first victory this season. They've been a lot, of, as you guys know, a ton of poles looking for their first win this year. Four poles is amazing. I talked to Michael before he climbed into the car. He said, you know what, I trade all four of those poles in for my first win. So it could happen here at Toledo Speedway. He will start in front 
of the field. It's Michael McDowell, Justin Algar making up row number one. When we come back, we will see the green flag fly at Toledo. Again, welcome back to Toledo, Ohio. They call it the Glass City, home to Max Klinger uh, from MASH. Mash. Yeah, Jeep. Uh, a lot of great things taking place here in the Toledo, Ohio area. And, of course, the Toledo Speedway, the home to the Hans Group 200. But this is race number eight. We have had a couple races since the last time we were on speed. Let's get you up to speed as to what has taken place. It was in Winchester where Michael McDowell was on the pole. And that's beginning to be a little bit of a broken record early on. We had a race crash between Thorpe and Jilton, Dexter Bean, Frank Kimmel, and Brian Keselowski all involved in that. On the final lap, though, it was Leslie and Black. He brings it home. Brian Keselowski second. Frank Kimmel rounds up third. Then on to Kentucky Speedway, Michael McDowell on the pole once again. <laughs> third career pole for Michael McDowell. He would break a wheel and be eliminated early on in this one. But then it was Justin Marks who has a big hit. He would be OK. Safety crews out to him immediately. Had a great race here. Eric Donnell put tires on late, was able to get by Aaron Crocker inside of 10 laps to go to go on to career victory number one in the Arthur Remax series. And so that has caught you caught up to the seven races that have taken place in the 2007 season. Let's get you caught up on where everyone will start in this race, the eighth race of 23 for 2007. Again, Michael McDowell on the pole, Justin Algar making up row number one, two very good cars in practice yesterday. Yeah, they sure were. Justin Algar got 10 points by virtue of qualifying second, so he will gain 10 points on our leader, Frank Kimmel. Brett Rose, Justin Marks making up row number four. See Billy Venerini, former Arkansas Remax winner, in row number five, along with Ken Schrader, a four-time winner here at Toledo Speedway. Dexter Bean, Frank Kimmel are in row number eight. Kimmel looking for his tenth win at Toledo Speedway in the Arkansas Remax Series. See Todd Bogger back in row number nine, trying to get his first win in the Arkansas Remax Series. Bobby Gerhardt won the inaugural race out there in Daytona to start off the 2007 season and actually came to Toledo and practice. They did some testing here, which is really uncharacteristic of that team. They put so much emphasis on their super speedway program, but they did come here to Toledo to test. They want to get that win here at Toledo. We're going to ride along with a few different cars, one of those being Brian Silas in the number 11. He'll start in the 30th position. He's had a, a busy week. He was in the truck race back in Charlotte on Friday night. Here's the hands group four to Frank Kimmel. This is, remember now, this is a backup car for Frank Kimmel. Had trouble, as we saw earlier, in practice, had to go to the backup car. Also going to ride along with Utah, Alabama native Justin South in the number 59. He'll start in the 14th position. And the green flag has flown. It is the Hans Group 200 underway. Justin Algar jumps out with a great start. Brian Keselowski also a good start. Those two get in front of Michael McDowell, so McDowell won't even lead the first lap here at Toledo. Either Justin got a great start or Michael McDowell got a horrible start. Michael McDowell, currently the second leading, or leads the second most laps of the 2007 season, so he's been good. We got a caution in turn number one. Flag has flown, that's the double zero of Rob Brent. He's turned sideways. Rob Bunker is also involved in that, the four car. There's a double zero right there. Two got turned around, this is our first caution in there have been a few cautions at Toledo. This one is the first. It takes place on lap number two. So we'll come right back and get back underway with the Hans Group 200. Speed's coverage of the Arca Remax Series from Toledo is presented by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. Brought to you in part by Hardcore Motorsports, proud sponsor of the Hardcore Motorsports Arca Safety Initiative. 
and by Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership. Nobody beats Aaron's. Nobody. Great crowd on hand here at Toledo Speedway for a short track race for the Arca Remax Series. And I tell you what, a gorgeous day for racing. It is just absolutely perfect. Not too warm, not too cool. Shirt sleeve weather. Let's take a look at this reach shot. I want to see how Justin Algar beat the two. Oh, my. Boy, I tell you, it yeah, looked, like, got it, it looked it. like Justin jumped, but Michael McDowell actually got a little bit loose, spun the rear wheels a little bit, but I've not seen a black flag from the ARCA officials, so undoubtedly they feel as though it was a legitimate start for Justin Algar. A great start. Yeah. We've been under uh, a few laps of caution here. One of the reasons for that, not actually the double zero or the four that were involved in the wreck that brought out the caution, but on the back stretch, actually going into turn number three, the number 26 of Brad Smith has broke, and so they've got the tow truck out there, and they're going to pull that car off of the racetrack. Hey, Don, what do you think was uh, going on with that start? Don Radebaugh. Having some problems with Don's communication. We'll get back to him in a moment. Yes, we will. And it's a very, very tight confines here. I think we got him now. Don, go ahead, buddy. You got me now? Yeah. Are away. you with me? <laughs> Stay with, with me you. now. It, I talked to uh, All Guys crew chief, Larry Moore. It wasn't that Justin got a, a really great start, and he did get a good start, but it was more that the two car of Michael McDowell just didn't go for whatever reason. I asked Larry also, how's the car? I know it's a little early to tell, but he tells me it's a little free, but they are going to tighten up later on in the race in long runs. Uh, Phil Parsons, is it too soon to really tell your handle at this point? Well, I tell you, I don't know what with one lap or so completed down. I'm not sure how you can tell that much about it, but uh, as you get the air pressures built up and the fuel burns out of the car, that will definitely change the handling. While we're under caution, we do want to take a look at our hardcore motorsports ARCA safety initiative. And this entails a race back in 2005 for the Sportsman Series. Take a look at this. The car on the outside is going to get pinched up against the wall, and as it does, the right wheels go up on the wall, and the car goes off the racetrack. That right there needed to be corrected, and so they have done some safety initiative here. Let's go down to Jim Trado to talk more. Season, prior to this season, what they did is they installed this one-inch thick cable all the way around the racetrack. They've had three different levels of it now. It's going to be going throughout the entire Grandstand area in front of the chain link fence. And where that car went out of the joint, thankfully no stands were over there. But what they've done is every 10 feet erected poles and put three ribbons of this around the entire circuit to keep the cars in on the racetrack. It's safer for the fans and, of course, safer for the competitors, including these 3,400-pound race cars. They want to stay on the racetrack and hopefully continue on. That was a wicked crash in that sportsman <laughs> division race. Yeah, he, uh, he'll be able to tell his kids and grandkids about, yeah, the time I left Toledo Speedway. <laughs> Literally. Literally left During the race. Speedway while I was racing. And that's a scary thing. Obviously, the, the safety is the number one issue here. And so Toledo Speedway, uh, the officials here have done a great job of making this a safer place. As you mentioned er as you mentioned earlier, Rick, I grew up at this racetrack, and it's amazing the transformation that the Speedway has taken over the 40-some years that I've been coming here. It looked really a great job by Ron Drager and, and all his bunch here. You're kind of showing your age there, telling me how many years you've come to this racetrack. I thought you were going on 40. Yeah, well, sort of, yeah. <laughs> About to go back to racing again out in front of the field. It's Justin Algar. Michael McDowell has made it back up to second. Brian Keselowski dropped back to third. Philip Majilton is fourth. And the 22 of Ken Butler, the third, rounds out our top five. Green flag back in the air. In this race, 200 laps, 100 miles. Michael McDowell trying to get underneath the 16 of Justin Algaier. You know, we talk so much about Ken Schrader and Frank Kimmel that have won so many of these races, but this is the, this is a new, younger breed of racing. You got Justin Algaier out front, Michael McDowell, another young guy, Brian Keselowski, another young guy, second generation driver, and then Ken Butler the third. What great young talent here in the Arcarine next series in the battle for the lead. Ryan 
Justin Algar, Michael McDowell, Brian Keselowski all shooting for the top spot. McDowell gets back out front. This will be his first lap led at Toledo Speedway, even though he started on the pole, didn't win the race back on the first lap. And now Brian Keselowski makes the move by Justin Algar. Those two have wins on short tracks in the Arca Remax Series. And our second caution of the day has come out. Don't see any cars on the track, but I believe there is some debris that made it up in turn, you know, turn one or two. So the safety vehicle made it out onto the racetrack in front of the field. We want to keep an eye on Frank Kimmel and see what check his progress. He's back up to the 15th position, so he's only gained one spot since the start of the race. 60. Patrick Shelter came by with a little bit of a damage to the right rear quarter panel of his car. That may have been the debris. There you see it right there. Some of that quarter panel is missing. Yeah, he's going to make his way onto pit road. They will try to work on that. He's got, he's got some damage at the front right of that car also. That's a good looking race car right there. It was. <laughs> was when it started. It's good looking on this side. Anyway, going to go behind the wall. We'll do a little bit of cosmetic work on that, I'm guessing. And so as they do that, we will slip away one more time. Michael McDowell has made his way back to the front of the field at Toledo. Green flag just flies. They make their way into turn three and four. And back out to the front stretch is Michael McDowell. Being chased by Brian Keselowski. Phil, I tell you what, in practice yesterday, I, I really thought Brian Keselowski had the best car of the field. He had a very, very good looking car, but he's got some local knowledge here as we see a battle for third. Philip Majilton gets it down on the inside of the 16 of Justin Algar to take over the third spot. But Brian Keselowski is a former track champion here at Toledo in the late model series. Really takes a good line around this racetrack. We see Justin Algar still working that really low line around this track. Guys like Ken Schrader, Frank Kimmel, they seem to enter the corners a little bit higher and, and really kind of cut down low when they get to the center. You want to get a good arc. You want to get that car turned in the center of the corner. The wider you can keep it coming in the corner, we get trouble on the racetrack. Mark Dimitrov gets turned around in the number 20. Mark out of Flat Rock, Michigan. Another place that uh, has a very famous short track. Absolutely. Long staple of the Arca Remax series. Don't run Flat Rock anymore. It's a, they call it the level pebble. Quarter, quarter <laughs> hey, mile. Hey, I've raced there. Yeah. Bill. Yes, you have. I was there. <laughs> I think you may have flown the green flag, actually. I, I think I did. I raced Ray Dunlap. And I'm guessing he's watching right now. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure to uh, throw that out there. Jim Trado. Hey guys, I was talking to Brian Keselowski just before the race and I said, Brian, because of all that experience you have here, what is this track going to do in this hot daytime sunshine? He said he ran a super late level special last fall, had a very fast race car, but he knows this track can get hot and greasy. Keep in mind that they had to qualify yesterday late afternoon in cooler conditions. It's a lot warmer today, so they had to make those guesses on how this track would be today at high noon. And Keselowski's got it pretty well figured out. Now, last time here, last fall, Keselowski led the majority of the laps, but ended up coming out of pit sequence and really on the short end of the stick, having to pit later than everybody else and ended up outside the top five. So he's got that in mind as well. A number of teams took note of that, how fast he was on used tires. So a lot of strategy played out. I said, Brian, what is his strategy? He said, you know, I don't know yet. We got to wait till 40 or 50 laps into the race and we'll see how it comes to us. I'd say he's doing pretty good right now, though. I like the way Jim put it there. Racing at high noon, almost like a showdown. <laughs> You've got all these guys getting together at high noon to see who wins at Toledo. We look at our second generation drivers here. Yeah, Frank Kimmel's father, Bill Kimmel, a longtime Arca Series competitor, winner in the Arca Series. Billy Leslie's father, Tracy, who is here, former Arca Remax champion. Brian Keselowski's father, Bob, a former Remax. Uh, Arca Remax Series champion Billy Bill. Venturini's his father Bill <laughs> is, a, is a former re oh, there's Philip McChilton he was running third and he has stalled on the racetrack over in turn number one got to uh, be an ignition the, he, problem or something like that stopped on the racetrack and pushed vehicle behind him and so they'll try to get him back onto pit road I'm guessing so that his crew can take a look at that and find out what has happened. What a horrible break for Philip Majilton. He, even if he can get his car running again, he's lost all his track position. He worked his way up to third, but it does not look like his car is refiring. Uh, I think now it has. 
or maybe not the push vehicle coming back up behind him again. So he will work his way back onto pit road and we're hearing that next time by they will go green which is not a good thing for Philip Magilton. He'll be on pit road when the green flag flies. Pit road speed here is 20 miles per hour. We were talking to Brian Keselowski before the race, and I said, what is that, about 3,000 RPMs in first gear? And he said, yeah, the thing lugs and, sh and shakes and everything. <laughs> hey, Don, what's going on with Ken Schrader? Well, he says he's just out for a cruise today, a Sunday afternoon cruise, actually. But we all know the history of Ken Schrader, but how about this car? This is chassis number 28 from the Hendrick Motorsports Stable. This used to be a Budweiser car. We're talking more than 15 years ago. This car has been to Victory Lane and Arca competition three times at Toledo, twice at South Boston, and last year on the DeCoin Mile Dirt. Incredible history. Green flag back out of the air. Thank you, Don, and Michael McDowell. Still leading the field around this half mile. Brian Keselowski, another one of those drivers from the area, Rochester Hills, Michigan. Brian Keselowski hails from. Side by side racing for fourth right now. Billy Venturini, the 25 on the inside of Kim Butler, the third. Billy's just running a limited, limited schedule this year. He's stepping out of the car on occasion, but loves to come here to Toledo Speedway. Got a little sponsorship help from the Bondo people. <laughs> that's one of those teams. That, uh, that's one of those sponsors that you really appreciate when uh, you come to a short track. Good side-by-side -side battle here at Toledo Speedway. It's great to see a racetrack that has an outside group where these cars can go side-by-side. -side. Billy Venerini grabbed his first win last year at Toledo. Actually, Salem Speedway where Billy got his first win. Billy's going to get that spot away to up into the fourth position from Ken Butler. Ken Schrader's going to follow Billy on the inside to take over fifth. Schrader working on the inside. Got a lap car down there, Gabby DiCarlo. Got a gaggle of cars right there. Billy Venturini's driven right up on the rear bumper of the 16 of Justin Allgaier. Amazingly enough, we've completed 27 laps, and this is the longest green flag run we've had. Jim Magilton was pushed onto pit road. Don, what was the problem? Well, guys, I talked to the crew chief, uh, Sean Parker. He said the car just quit. They changed the battery, and they're back out underway. So a battery change, a quick battery change, but obviously, three laps a down. Of time, he's three laps off the pace. Well, there's some hard racing right here. The 22 of Kim Butler the third was almost forced into the outside wall right at the start finish line in some three wide races. Where do you, if you're a slower lap car on a racetrack like this, where do you run? Do you run high? Do you run low? You want to stay right on the bottom of the race chart. Historically, slow cars on the bottom and then let the faster cars make their way around you on the outside. But the preferred line here is on the bottom. It is, but that's okay. The, the, the slow cars have a right to the racetrack too. And if they stay on the bottom, they're more out of the way there than they are if they stay up high. They can't make as much time up high, so it's not really fair to ask them to run up on the high side. 16, that's, a just, that's Justin Algar, and Justin currently being scored in the third position. And right now, he's got his hands full, the 22 moving up on the inside of him. That is Ken Butler the third. So Ken Butler the third takes third away. Yeah, Billy Venturini, the 25, and the 52 of Ken Schrader gonna follow him by. Gonna put Justin Algar a couple more spots down. Really seems like he's not in the flow of things right now. And a year ago, it was Justin Algar, who was the first one that Ken Schrader went over to really congratulate on such a phenomenal run. He finished second in this race. Had a great race, but not quite got it. But obviously, he can work on that car on a pit stop and maybe make a better. Here's Frank Kimmel. We're going to check his progress. He's up into the top ten. Right now, he's been showing up in the ninth position. Good, good forward progress for Frank Kimmel in a car that hasn't raced in two years. Yeah, again, Kimmel raced or started this race in 16th spot moved up to the ninth position. We figured it'd be just a matter of time before you see the cream rise to the top, and that being Kimmel and Ken Schrader. Yeah, there goes Frank Kimmel by Justin Allgaier, his closest pursuer in the points right now. Following the 30th, Terry Jones, he's having a great race early on. Started back in the 11th spot. Oh, caution comes back out at the racetrack, and that is because of the number one of Dominic Casola into the wall almost in turn four. 
And so our fourth caution of the day has come out. This one comes out on lap 36. And so it has been the two of Michael McDowell. Once he got back in front, he hasn't relinquished. Tonight on Speed, step into Wind Tunnel with Dave Despain. Don't miss the biggest names, the biggest opinions, and the biggest mouths all season long. And, of course, Dave is on hand to fan the flames of controversy. Wind Tunnel with Dave Despain. That's tonight at 9 Eastern, live on Speed. And he has as a guest the 2005 Indy champ, Dan Weldon, who will be starting this year's race in the top ten. So don't miss Wind Tunnel. Let's go down trackside again with Don Radebaugh. Well, guys, some cars are loose, some cars are tight. Justin Allgaier is all those things. Loose in, tight in the center, and loose off. He says the car is absolutely horrible. They made a pit stop, changed four tires, changed the wedge, and made an air pressure adjustment. Bill Parsons, I want to know, when they're changing wedge, what exactly are they doing? They're just shifting the weight around in the car. They, they want to take uh, they want to take weight off of one end and put it on the other end. You put some wedge in the right rear corner, you're actually you're actually taking weight off the right rear and putting it on the on the on the left rear to try to get the back end to adhere to the racetrack a little bit more. Yeah, you had you had explained wedge to me of the on the right side. If you're looking at the back of the car, the right side being up, that is wedge. The right so rear put, the right yeah, rear tire right rear tire up higher than the left rear tire. Exactly. You so put wedge in, the right rear tire will be higher yet. Yep. You take wedge out. And the right rear tire will actually come down relative to the left rear tire. And whatever you do to the right rear to wedge, you would you you would move the left front jack screw the same way, and that would that would add wedge. If you back off the right rear jack screw, that would add wedge. You back off the left front jack screw, and you would add add, add wedge. I love the complexity to racing. Yeah. <laughs> you change something on the right rear, it also changes affects the left front. Jim Trader. Hey guys, Dexter Bean was just in. Third and points coming in in that five-star Telecom Chevrolet. He came down pit road. They added fuel, but more importantly, they took tape off the nose. The car was running a bit warm, a little bit tight, so they just took a bit of tape off of Dexter Bean's car. Hopefully, that will help. But again, they put fuel in the car, so he may be able to go beyond some of these guys on pit stops when it comes to the fuel. Some of the lower, slower lapped cars have made their way up to the inside line. They will restart. Now it's a double-file restart. Jason Hedleski will lead the lap-down cars on the inside. That. What that does is creates a little bit more difficulty for Michael McDowell, Brian Keselowski, and Ken Butler Jr. Michael McDowell able to clear the last car as well as Brian Keselowski, but Ken Butler the third is hung up behind Ken, behind uh, Jason Adelowski. Loses about six or eight car lengths to the front two. Still in the back of this thing, three and almost four wide at Toledo Speedway. I don't think that. I don't think that's a good recipe for success at this racetrack. It's a recipe for disaster here at the latest speedway. Two wide is great. Three wide, that's a little, that's a little iffy. Yeah. Brian Keselowski with a great run on Michael McDowell as they get into three and four. A little bit of a difficult racetrack here in the fact that turns one and two and turns three and four are banked differently. Yeah, we're only talking one degree, so we really, as a driver, you don't even feel that. We've got 12 degrees down to one and two, 11 degrees down in three and four. You don't even hardly notice the difference. Ryan Silas is currently in traffic right now. That's looking out of his windshield. That's what he sees. He's up in the uh, 17th position right now. He started way back at 30th, so a nice progression thus far for Brian Silas in Andy Hillenberg's car. A lot of jockeying for position as we see in front of him. Coming out of turns two and out of four, they get right up against that wall as they go down the front and back stretch. You want to use the whole race track. You want to let the centrifugal force take you right out to the wall. That's why when you have a car on the outside of you and you're on the inside, you can't get off that corner quite as hard as you would like because that car is there and you need all that race track. Right side of staying in the second groove. Around this racetrack, he's got the slower cars on the inside of him as he continues to try to work around traffic. The 23 of Josh Krug is in the 16th position. That's the car just was left of our screen for a moment. In front of Brian Silas. Riding along with the 59 of Justin South now. He's currently in the 13th position, but he's able to run down on the white line. Looks like his car is handling fairly well right now. That's the 14 right in front of him. That's Brett Rowe. That is a battle for position right there. Coming up on 50 laps of racing, and that 
somewhat of a magic number when we talked to the crew chiefs today. They talked about anywhere from 50 to 70 laps. If a caution would come out, they would think about coming down, changing four tires, filling it with fuel. You know, we talked about Keselowski, crew chief and father of Brian Keselowski, and he said, we really should have won both of these races here last year, but we did two different pit strategies. We did just the complete opposite, and neither one of them worked. <laughs> well, he has had success at short tracks, and obviously you mentioned earlier a track championship at this racetrack, so he knows how to run around the track, but he still has not gained that victory in the Arca Remax Series here at Toledo Speedway. Don Radebaugh. Well, as always, there's more to the story. Look here, Justin Allgaier's left rear tire. We even circled it for you. It was going flat on the 16 car, but this may play into their pit strategy. You know, you can do this race on one stop. We'll see how this plays out here at Toledo Speedway. Yeah, Don, you're exactly right, because we talked to some of the crew chiefs, and they said, with enough caution laps, you could probably run this race without a pit stop. But they are allowed to change tires twice. They have eight tires in the pits. Justin Allgaier, obviously, has already put hit one of those sets on, but he may decide to stay out, or he may decide to come in later on in the race. Bob Keselowski said, in a perfect world, he would pit somewhere between lap 50 and lap 75, and then see how the race plays from there. But he also thought that in their situation, since they're not running a full schedule, they're here to win. Now, they don't want to finish second. They don't want to finish third. They want to have a top five. They want to win this race. So whatever it takes, they want to get up to the front. Yeah, Bob said if they're running second and they can't beat the, the leader, then they'll pit with two laps to go <laughs> if there's just enough, enough few, few enough cars on the lead lap. Michael McDowell holding on to the top spot, but it's Brian Keselowski that's all over his back bumper trying to get by Michael McDowell. Keselowski looking for his first win at Toledo, Ohio in the ARCA Remax Series. Michael McDowell looking for his first win in the ARCA Remax Series. Has not found victory lane as of yet in his career. And a young one at that. You see the yellow stripe on the back bumper for Michael McDowell, meaning he is a rookie. So looking for his first win in his rookie season. He's had four poles in the last five races. Can he convert that to victory? We'll find out. Tonight on Speed, don't miss the Speed Report. NASCAR in Charlotte, the IndyCar Series back home again in Indiana, ALMS in Utah, Rolex Sports Cars in Laguna. It's a busy, busy weekend in racing, and Speed Report's got it all. Get the why behind the story with the Speed Report tonight. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on Speed. What a weekend on Speed it has been. Culminating right here with the ARCA Remax Series. It was a slow start to this race, but, boy, we have really had a pretty clean race since about lap 38. No trouble. Right in front stretch, right at start finish line. Gabby DiCarlo in the 90 gets spun around, as does the 707 of Billy Tanner. And so just as I mention it, the caution comes back out. Sorry about that. You That's put the fault. kiss of death right on it. There, That's my it? fault. Tell you, we may be in the pit window right now. We have completed 65 laps. This is right when Bob Keselowski said he would love to see a caution flag to be able to bring Brian in. They're running second right now. Pit road is still closed right now. We would more than likely expect a majority of the field to come down pit road this time. Now, this also could be a situation where somebody who decides, well, my car's really good. I can come in, do this one stop, and depending upon how I get off of pit road, that could be it. I won't come back in again. Absolutely, and I think we're definitely going to see different, different pit strategy. I mean, I think, I think the majority of the good cars are going to come in. I think the good cars are going to come in, but some of them may stay on the racetrack for track position. And Michael McDowell out in front of the field. He started this race on the pole, but it was Justin Allgaier who actually beat him into race or into turn number one when the green flag flew. Brian Keselowski went by him, but then it was good racing, and he was able to take over the top spot. So Michael McDowell looking to duck down on pit road, and Ken Schrader is going to stay out on the racetrack. We, as does we, Billy Venerini. We knew somebody would. <laughs> <laughs> Little pit strategy change there. Michael McDowell leading a few cars down pit road, but quite a few are actually going to stay out also. Coming in, I'm here. So Michael McDowell leading his team onto pit road, and let's head down to Jim Trader, who's with Michael McDowell. 
Message from the crew chief. Let's take it nice and easy. Two rounds on the track bar and four Hoosier radials, or four bias flags, excuse me. They're going to go to the right sides first. We see the catch can guy putting the wrench in the rear window. Tire carrier will make that two round adjustment on the track bar. They want to keep the wedge the same. Right behind the Brian Keselowski is also in for him pit stop. So his strategy is indeed to pit at this portion of the race. A little bit of monkey see, monkey do on pit road as well. First off is Ken Butler, the third McDowell's teammate. A little bit of a hang up on the left rear. Make a wish. Dodge Charger making his way back out onto the racetrack. Here comes Frank Kimmel and his hands group number 46. And it looks as though the 29 of Brian Keselowski got out just in front of Frank Kimmel. Now, Ken Butler the third was the first off of Pitt Road, but he will not be leading this race when we go back to green. There were cars that stayed on the racetrack. Welcome back to the Arca Remax Series Hans Group 200 from Toledo Speedway. It is Ken Schrader who stayed out. He was the first car that did not come in on the most recent caution. So Ken Schrader is our leader, and he's actually put a little distance between himself and Brian Kess, or actually Billy Venerini, who's running in the second position right now. Third is Bobby Gerhardt in that Lucas Oil number five. Caution out, caution's out. And another caution coming out on the racetrack. So this is caution number six. Zero seven of Billy Tanner. Second incident he was involved with. Well, Phil, we got to obviously question what some of these guys are thinking as far as not coming in this most recent time. Will they come onto pit road now, or are they thinking about waiting until, you know, maybe 60, 50 laps to go in the race to come in? Well, if we didn't pit just a, a moment ago, they should pit now. Right. I mean, Ken Schrader and the group that stayed on the racetrack, we've only run three or four green flag laps, so we should not pit now. Don, what's going on down on pit road? Well, from the 52's perspective, Ken Schrader, they've got their pit strategy planned out. This is a one-stop race for them. At least that's the way it stands for now. Schrader says the car is absolutely perfect. And I got to tell you, in the long runs yesterday, which is exactly what we're getting here today, they were virtually the quickest car. In the long 30 and 40 lap runs, the only car down into the 17 ones and twos on the long run. So they're good and they're set up for the long run. They'll say they're only going to do one stop and uh, hopefully even drive to victory lane. Well, he's done it before. Yeah, he has. My question to you is, and I obviously understand that with gas prices as astronomical as they are right now, these cars only get between four and maybe four and a half or 4.6 miles. Probably on a short track like this, probably even less than four less miles. Less than that. So, so with a 22-gallon fuel cell, we would expect them to be able to go predominantly most of this race. I mean, 88 to you know 90 miles, but it is a 100-mile race. But with these cautions, could somebody chance it and go the entire way? Well, they could. Bob, Kesel Bob Keselowski told us before the race that he thought you could definitely, with enough caution laps, make it the entire distance on one fuel load. I don't think we'll see that because new tires are good for something here. Yesterday, when people put new tires on to simulate qualifying, they would gain almost a half a second. So, you know, track position is critical, but new tires versus 150 lap tires, no contest. Okay. Jim Trento. I thought guys about Bobby Gerhardt and his team. They are taking this race very seriously, running for the championship. They looked at the points. They looked at how they were doing, and they said, you know what? We tested Daytona and Talladega a lot. We all know that, but this team came here after Kentucky on that Sunday following and tested here at Toledo. Rather uncharacteristic, yes, but as Bobby put it so eloquently, his brother Billy actually said, this pays the same amount of points as Daytona. We're in the championship hunt. We've got to improve our short tracks. They came in here and tested. No reason why they couldn't run top five here today, but uh, that test certainly helped them last week. Well, Jim, you're exactly right. The other thing that they need to think about is you run Toledo twice. You only run Daytona once and Talladega once, but you run the short track more than once. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a good move by Billy and Bobby Gerhardt to test here. And again, what you, what you learn here will help you get other short tracks too, not just here at Toledo. Single file they have fallen into now, following Ken Schrader around this racetrack. Good driver to follow. There's Bobby Gerhardt right there at the five we were talking about. That's Billy Leslie, son of Tracy Leslie, former Arthur Remax Series champion, won just a few weeks ago. I believe it was Winchester that Billy got that victory. Young driver with a lot of talent here. That's the next Robert Yates, next L Cup car that Billy's driving. There's Justin Allgaier. 
Right now he's being shown in the fifth position. We get Justin Algar came in on lap 37. And so he had fresher tires, did not come in on the most recent caution. And so he has been able to get some of that track position back by not stopping. Yeah, right now he's back against the go trouble again on the racetrack. He's got the 20 of Mark nope. Dimitrov that spun around. The caution hasn't come out as of yet. We're going to see if he gets going. The Arca Remax official has the yellow flag in his hand, but has not waved it as of yet. So we stay green on the racetrack. We'll see if Mark can get that car moving and back out onto the racing surface or if he'll bring it into the infield, maybe, and onto pit road. Good side-by-side -side battle right there. That's Justin Algar, the 16 on the inside, the 18 of Billy Russell on the outside. That is a battle for the fourth position. Justin Algar has it. Algar moving up toward the front now. And that's a situation where Algar coming in on lap 37, he may chance it. He could go all the way if he gets into a situation where he needs to have that track position. Yeah, I think that's 163 laps. I think, think that's definitely within the window of being able to make it. And right now he's got great track position, so that's something I'm sure they're thinking about. Frank Kimmel on that 46 has been moving up. Currently in the 12th position, being scored 12th. He's just over seven and a, about seven seconds behind our leader. Ken Schrader on the racetrack. Frank Kimmel just coming out of turn number four. Ken Schrader just going on to the backstretch. Frank just took over the 11th position from Todd Bowser in the 21. Hans Group coming on board for both Toledo races for Frank Kimmel's team. Mike McDowell, Michael McDowell just in front of Frank Kimmel now. Michael McDowell so dominant early on in this race has moved back up to the 10th position after making his pit stop, lap 67. Okay, right after the pit stop, Kent Butler the third was the car that won the race off pit road, and he was restarted right in front of the two of Michael McDowell, and now he's at least a half a straightaway ahead of Michael McDowell. He has a great race car here. He's been able to pass cars on the high side of this racetrack, down on the low side of the racetrack, really connected, and that is a great look at how well that car is running. Another situation with young talent. There's so much young talent in this Arca Remax series. Well, we mentioned earlier, seven different winners so far in the seven races, and five of those first-time winners. So you're definitely talking about some young talent here. Jim Trader. I just checked in with Jeff McClure, the crew chief on the 22 of Ken Butler, the third. This is their fourth Arca Remax series race this season, third in the short tracks, but he said when they came and tested with their teammate Michael McDowell, it really gave them the baseline they're using right now. They haven't really done a lot of changes from that test to yesterday's practice session until now. That pit stop, why it was so fast, only four tires, no other changes for Ken Butler, the 22. So four tires stop, four fresh Hoosiers on that number 22. And he continues to run around this racetrack like that car is on a rail. Yeah, he's in the sixth position right now, trying to take fifth away from Billy Leslie. Is able to do it. And so, out in front of the field, it is the Federated Auto Parts number 52 of Ken Schrader. He continues to lead at Toledo, looking to make it five wins if he can get the victory lane. Speed coverage of the Arca Remax series from Toledo is brought to you by Hardcore Motorsports. Proud sponsor of the Hardcore Motorsports Arca Safety Initiative. By Victory, the new American motorcycle. Find your local dealer at victorymotorcycles.com. Seventh caution of the day has come out at Toledo Speedway. And only a few cars made their way onto pit road. Billy Venerini being one of those cars. The 18 of Billy Leslie also coming down on pit road. Jim Trado. Down the 18th pit for Billy Leslie, the Winchester winner, putting on four tires. Again, he's up in the sixth position, really in the hunt all day long. No question about the experience with his family. Lee Leslie's the uh, crew chief. His father, Tracy, is the team owner and spotter. These guys are now a little bit a little bit slow in the left rear, but down and away for Billy Leslie in the 18 car. You know, that's funny, Jim. I was talking to Tracy Leslie, somebody that I raced with for a long time in the Bush series, and I asked him if he was going to spot. I knew that he spotted for Billy when he won the race at Winchester. He said, no, I get a little bit too shook up. He said, I, Ben Hess is standing around here, and I doesn't have anything to do today, so I'm going to let Ben Hess do the spotting. <laughs> doesn't have anything better to do, so I'll let him take care of it. Ken Schrader still out in front. Philip Magilton is actually 
not scored on the lead lap. He's about three laps three down. Three laps down. Maybe possibly two. So he'll have to start on the inside line. Then it'll be Bobby Gerhardt. Remember, there is no lucky dog in the Arca Remax series, so you're going to have to, to get a lap back, you're going to have to earn it back. And Philip Majilton being three laps down is going to be very, very difficult to do. Ken Schrader setting a tremendous pace right now. He's obviously the fastest car in the racetrack, even faster than a lot of the guys that pitted with, for fresh tires. But we really got to watch that 22 of Ken Butler, the third, though. Hey, Don, what's going on with Ken Schrader's bunch? Well, guys, Ken Schrader and crew were all set to come in that last time by, but at the last minute, Schrader waved it off and said the car's too good. And I guess, guys, the longer they wait, the better their tires are going to be in the end with a one-stop show. You know, Don, it's funny. I asked Ken Schrader yesterday. I said, now, who is the crew chief? Because Donnie Richardson is gone. His normal crew chief has gone to Iowa and Minnesota running the Bush East Series. And he said, no, we are. Yeah, it's kind of a collective group. Yeah, he said, what's me? And it's him and, you know, me, Brian over here. And, you know, so he uh, collective crew chiefing for Ken Schrader. But I think he called that shot one right there. Yeah, amazing thing for Ken Schrader, the amount of races that he runs in a year. He he can run up to 100 different races in a year. And that's running the Cup Series, running, obviously, the Arca Remax Series, and running quite a few truck races this year in the Craftsman Truck Series. Green flat back out. And, and he really loves this Arca Remax Series. He, he, we talk about it all the time. He just loves coming, running against Frank Kimmel and Bobby Gerhardt, people like this. He continues to joke about making Frank Kimmel's life very uneasy when he decides to run a full time Arca Remax Series. Yeah, he said if his next tough cup Cup career ever comes to an end, and he, he said he just may decide to make Frank's life so miserable. And Frank said, That's okay, I'll work and I'll get you another cup ride. I don't want you anywhere near me on a weekly basis. And Frank will be looking for sponsors. Say, no, we need Ken Schrader definitely running cup cars. Bobby Gerhardt right on the back bumper of Ken Schrader now. He's running second. Third, Justin Algar has made his way up. Then it's the 22, and a very impressive run for Ken Butler, the third. Running in the fourth position. See the biggest movers right there. Bobby Gerhardt up 20 positions from his start. Mike Buckley, Buckley up 12. Norm Bennings up 12 positions. Frank Kimmel from 16th to 5th up 11. And Kit Schrader from 10th to 1st. Nine spots. Kit Schrader mentioning how good that car is right now. Just passing the halfway points. 99 laps to go. And it's Ken Schrader out in front of this field. Michael McDowell's led, Justin Allgaier's led. There's Frank Kimmel making the pass on the 22 of Kim Butler the third. I thought Kim Butler may have the fastest car in the racetrack. Frank Kimmel just passed him. That car that Frank Kimmel is driving actually a backup because he wrecked his primary car in practice, but that backup car actually won here at Toledo back in 2004. So it's not uh, foreign to victory lane. Yeah, Larry Clement, the car owner, said this is a great race car. We just built new cars, newer cars subsequently. And, and the one that Frank raced yesterday was a fairly new Hopkins car. And said, well, and that's I was watching Frank repair, do the repairs on that car. He says, I just can't get through a weekend without tearing this car up. One of the amazing things, too, about this car, here on a short track, you're going to use the brakes quite a bit. The backup car doesn't have the duct work that the primary car had. They had three lines going back to the brakes in the primary car. They only have two lines going back to the actual discs now. So that was not too big of a concern for Larry Clement, though, he said, because Frank is very easy on brakes in his race car. We'll be right back to Toledo Speedway with more racing after these messages. Welcome back to Toledo Speedway, Toledo, Ohio. Ken Schrader still out in front of Bobby Gerhardt, Frank Kimmel, Justin Allgaier, and Ken Butler, the third. Great battle right here. Bobby Gerhardt all over the back. And meanwhile, the 46 of Frank Kimmel is driven by, by uh, Bobby Gerhardt for the second spot. Three wide as they come out of turn number two. Justin Allgaier was on the outside. He's trying to get the position away from Bobby Gerhardt also. Now, Ken Schrader with Frank Kimmel all over his back bumper. I was, long. I was watching the lap times. Frank Kimmel was consistently faster than Ken Schrader. Remember, Frank Kimmel stopped back on lap number 67, has pressure tires, and Ken Schrader Ken is going to have to pit. Now, there's no way that he can make it the rest of the way because he's not going to be as good as Frank Kimmel. Frank Kimmel out in front of the field now, our fourth different leader of this race. Ken Schrader has dropped back to second. Bobby Gerhardt looks like he is going to be contending for the second spot. Justin Algar has moved up. Ken Butler the third. 
holding on to his position of fifth. You know, I know we've talked about it a lot, Rick, but right, right now running first and second between them, 13 wins here at Toledo Speedway. Frank Kimmel, again, Trouble, the front, right? the caution on the front stretch. It's the 28 of Mike Buckley. And so Mike Buckley brings out our eighth caution of the day. That's going to give Kent Schrader a chance to hit pit road. He's definitely going to need to do it this time. He's going to have to have fresh Hoosier tires if he's going to race with Frank Kimmel. And now he's going to have to work his way through quite a few cars. Yeah, there are quite a few cars on the lead lap. We're showing right now 17 cars on the lead lap. A lot of smoke and that right or the left front tire of the 28 of Mike Buckley locked up on that car. So he's going to make his way onto pit road or at least he should. He's going to wait till pit road open right opens right now. Pit road is still closed when the pace truck gets to Flagman. There's the green flag right there. Pit are open. I think we're definitely going to see Kenny Schrader come down pit, pit road probably as well as Bobby Gerhardt. Justin Algar looks like he's lining up to come down pit road also. So is Ken Butler the third. And so Ken Schrader makes his way and leads a few cars onto pit road. Don Radebaugh. Barring no other issues, this will be it for Ken Schrader. And they just dropped the jack gun. Working on the right side, no adjustments necessary. We talked about that early. The car is act absolutely perfect. He'll take gas and four Hoosier skins and go. Jim Trado. First gear 4000 is the call for Bobby Gerhardt. Gerhardt John the caution said, I think this is the best car I've ever had at Toledo. And his brother Billy said, good, because we're putting the best set of good, best set of tires we've had on all race long. This is the best set. They're going with scuff tires on Bobby Gerhardt's car. The Arca crew is now saying there's something on the right-hand side of the car. They're not letting them down. Arca crew, Arca official telling the crew to come back over. The tire is still there. However, a little bit longer on the left side for Bobby Gerhardt down here in the middle of one and two at the apex. All looks tight in the front and rear. Bobby Gerhardt down to the way. Ken, Ken Butler the third in the 22 makes it off of pit road in front of Schrader. Gerhardt and the 23 of Josh Krug. Also, Justin Algar now coming off. Looks like Brian Keselowski also made his way on pit road. We'll be right back. Just back underway with the hands group 200 for the Arca Remax Series. It is race number eight of a 23 race schedule. Frank Kimmel has yet to find victory lane in 2007, but he leads the field here at Toledo. Hey, Justin South from Hueytown, Alabama has made up his way up into the second position. He's had a good, quiet, steady run here. Matt Merrill out of Gregory, Texas, currently running third in that number 32. Billy Vitrini, the 25 car, is running fourth. Billy Leslie, the 18, is running fifth. Again, just 75 laps of racing to go. After 125 laps, Kimmel out in front, seven lead changes. We've had eight cautions for 31 laps, and only three cars are out of the race currently. I tell you, I mentioned at the beginning, Kimmel hasn't been in victory lane. It has been a very odd season for that team, hasn't it, Don? 19, it's 1997 since Frank Kimmel has gone this deep into the season without a victory. Yeah, Don, it looks as though, I apologize, we've uh, got to break in here, but a caution has come out. It's the ninth caution. 23 of Josh Krug. Backing it into the wall in turns one and two. The 14 of Brett Rowe is also involved. He's a little further around the racetrack. There was contact getting down in turn number one. And Josh Krug got the worst of it. Let's take a look at it here, Rick. This is right after the initial contract. You get contact. You can see the pretty significant damage to the rear of Josh Krug's uh, car. Again, Josh Krug and the 14 of Brett Rowe involved in this accident. Josh Krug, the worst of the two, though. He will see if he can bring that in onto pit road, and they'll have to do quite a bit of work. We'll see if he'll be able to make it back out on the racetrack. We'll jump away one more time for some messages and be back.
Stay on Speed Ordinary People team up with Two Wheel Superstars for a ride of a lifetime. Don't miss Epic Ride Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on Speed. Still under caution here at Toledo Speedway. And, Don, I know you were talking a little bit about Kimmel earlier. We'd love to hear how that all ended up. Well, uh, the stats are interesting on Frank Kimmel, as always. It's been since 1997 since Kimmel has gone this deep into the season without a victory. This is the eighth race of the 23-event tour. To go a little further, he's approaching 10,000 laps led here in ARCA Remax Series competition more than any other driver. He averages about 900 to 1,000 laps led over the last half dozen years. How many has he led this year outside of today at Toledo? Two at Winchester Speedway. How hungry is Frank Kimmel? Very, very, very hungry. Obviously an eight-time series champion, wants to be out in front, wants to win races, but a year ago didn't find victory lane that many times either as we had quite a few different winners. Yeah, let's see if we can check in with Frank Kimmel. Hey, Frank, Phil Parsons in the speed booth. Can you hear me, buddy? Hey, you, that backup car is looking pretty good right now, but you've got some cars behind you with a little fresher tires. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh... Okay. uh our pitch strategy, I don't know about yet. We'll have to see how it works out at the end. We still have an opportunity to come back in if you need to, but you were obviously faster than Ken Schrader, who had who had a lot more laps on his tires than you did, and now he's back in about the sixth or seventh spot with fresh tires. Uh, you know, Kenny treated me awfully good right there, and uh, you know, it's just going to be a great another great Toledo race. We'll just have to see how it works out, Bill. Well, you guys are sure giving that backup car a good ride. Now have a good good rest of the race. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate it. You did a good job on that fuel cell, buddy. We appreciate the help. <laughs> Thanks. Do a little double duty there, aren't you, Bill? Yeah, a little bit. Taking a look at Justin Marks and that number 65. What's going on with that team, Jim? He was involved with the caution with the 28 of Buckley, and what happened was he didn't know he had a flat tire until they were about to go back to green. We see the damage from the rub, but here is what happened. The tire went down. That's the plug that usually is used when they have a super speedway. The inner liner goes here, and the actual air temp for the outer tire goes here. Well, that's plugged off in a short track, but it sheared off, causing a flat tire, so he dropped into the pits just as he went back to green, so that's why he's back in the order. Thank you for that. And so they continue with the cleanup in turn one and two. They put a lot of speedy dry down as there was some fluid from the 23 of Josh Krug. Today, catch the Rolex Sports Car Series on speed. Points leader Max Angelelli sets his sights on Laguna Seca's gut-wrenching corkscrew. And for the first time since 2004, the first four races have been won by four different sets of teammates. Who will make it to victory lane today? Well, don't miss the Rolex Sports Car Series live 4 p.m. Eastern only on speed. Riding along with Brian Silas in the number 11, still under caution. Again, Josh Krug got into the wall coming through turns one and two up toward the top. And built some fluid on the racetrack and so they put speedy dry down and the cars have been running through that but again still under caution they're letting the drivers know next time by the flag stand they will see the green flag we'll go back to racing again 136 laps have been completed here at Toledo we're going 200 so try to do the math but it's 64 laps <laughs> remaining you got that right but this is the difficult part for Frank Kimmel you could hear the indecision in his voice he knows he's out there he's got the lead he's got great track position but he knows fifth and sixth right now Kim Butler the third and Ken Schrader with fresher tires than him and he, he saw how good his tires were compared to Ken Schrader when he had about 50 laps less on his tires than Kenny did so he really wonders if he's a sitting duck out there for those guys on fresh tires Field falls in behind the 46 of Frank Kimmel. The pace truck will make its way off of the racing surface. Green flag back in the air. We're back underway. The hands grew 200. What a great jump by Frank Kimmel right there. He put about four or five car lengths on Justin South. Uh, Terry Jones has a, a <laughs> he's got an idea in his head right now that he's going to wreck that 46. Wait, well, he's got a great race car. He got involved in a spin and lost a lap. He tried to take a look. Oh my goodness. Frank Kimmel on the restart, but now right Justin South was pulled up beside him a little bit down the front straightaway. Right on his back bumper now. We're riding with Justin South just in front of us. That's Terry Jones in that number 30. And right in front of him, race leader, Frank Kimmel. Frank Kimmel wants to put as much distance as he can. Got a battle right now for third. The 22 of Ken Butler, the third on the inside of 
the 32 car of Matt Merrill. Matt Merrill with a very strong run. Started this race in the 13th. Made his way up to the third position. Now lost that to Ken Butler, the third. And so it is Frank Kimmel, Justin South, Ken Butler, the third, one, two, and three. And moving up also the 18 of Billy Leslie. Kenny Schrader in the 52 also follows him by. Now the two of Michael McDonald's going to try to do the same thing. There's Justin Allgaier right behind Michael McDonald trying to take another spot. This is a battle up into the top 10. I know you like music and Michael McDonald is a great musician, but Michael McDowell is the race car driver. That's right. I do like Michael <laughs> McDonald. But, but I like Michael McDowell too. Yeah, an impressive run here for Michael McDowell as he continues to work his way back towards the front. He started this race on the pole. Looks like he's had a little bit of damage to the right rear of that car. Got into it with another car on the racetrack. But he works his way back up following that 52 of Ken Schrader. Kenny's going to look to the inside of the 18 of Billy Leslie, going to try to take over that fourth position. Is able to do it. McDowell also looking on the inside, and still Ken Schrader hasn't cleared that 18 yet, but McDowell is going to poke the nose underneath the 18, and he will try to make the pass as well. So Schrader has made it up to fourth. Ken Butler, the third, is up to third. Justin South, second, and a big stretch of real estate between Justin South and our leader, Frank Kimmel. Kimmel has put about five parlors between them two. Remember now, the 22 of Ken Butler, the third, and Ken Schrader pitted on lap number 118, so they had fresher tires. Frank Kimmel pitted back on lap number 67, so 50 laps fresher tires. We trouble right at the start finish line. Caution coming out, a big hit for the number four of Rob Bunker. Also involved in that, I believe it was the 34. Daryl Basham made his way onto pit road, but. Look at the damage on this four of Rob Bunker. Quite a bit of damage. Rob is a road racer from New Jersey. Trying to figure this oval track racing out a little bit. There's Daryl Basham, the other car involved. Let's see what Frank does. Let's see if Frank decides to pit here or whether he's going to stay out on the racetrack. We're getting down now. We only show 14 cars on the lead lap. That's still a lot of cars to have to negotiate. Pit Road is still closed right now. Pit Road is going to be closed because Rob Bunker's car is actually right at the entrance to Pit Road. Let's take one look at what took place. This is already after they made some contact. Daryl Basham, the 34 and the 4. Rob Bunker made some contact. Daryl able to continue on down Pit Road. Rob Bunker climbing out of his car now. So 10 cautions from Toledo Speedway has slowed down the pace just a bit here. Will Frank Kimmel make his way to pit road one last time? We'll find out when we come back. That's what the field will be saying. Why can't we be Frank Kimmel at the Hans Group 200 as Kimmel running out in front and quite possibly he's going to stay on the racetrack for the remainder of this race. Yeah, I, I think the, the big decision right now is we, we right now we're showing 50 laps to go. I'm not sure with as many cars as we have in the lead lap, which is 14. I'm not sure Frank and Bill think there's maybe too many cars to try to negotiate their way through. Don, what do you think? Are they going to come in or stay out? I don't think so, Phil. Let's go back to rewind to last year. They pitted. They were leading the race and pitted inside of 30 laps, and they came back to run third and didn't win the race. I think they learned a lesson last year in that regard. I don't think you'll see the fifth or the 46 car on pit road, not this late in the game. Yeah, I agree with you, Don. I, I think uh, with this many cars on the lead lap, I don't think there's enough time left to try to get by all those cars because a lot of these cars pitted only about 30 laps to go for fresh tires. It's not like they have 100 laps on their tires. And Frank Kimmel's been so strong in the latter part of this race here. The last last segment that they just were running from the last caution. They were they were pulling away from second place Justin South. And so yeah, pretty hit, strong car. The road is open and Frank is staying on the racetrack. Let's see if we can t talk to Ken Schrader. He's right now being shown in the in the fourth position. Hey, Kenny, this is Phil up in the booth. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I got this bill. You, uh, you've got a little bit fresher tires than, uh, than Frank and the 59 of Justin South. Ken Butler is the third is in third, and you in fourth have fresher tires than those guys. Are the fresh tires going to be enough to get by Frank and uh, Justin South? We'll just have to see, Bill. I, I thought we could stretch that first set, thinking they might pit again, you know, and then, then we'd just give up 20 or 30 laps on our tires. But uh, we'll see. We need to get some green flag racing. It's not going to be a real bad day unless I run into something yet. No, we, we know you're not going to do that, but uh, you've had a good run so far, and, uh, you know, it looked like when Frank got to you, when you were leading the race before you made your pit stop, looked like he was quite a bit faster. He had about 50, 50, 60 less laps on his tires than you did. Uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping comes into play at the end of this race, but uh, we've got to find out. Where it comes. All right, buddy, we'll finish it off. We'll all be okay. Thanks, Kenny. All right, some of the cars now making their way onto pit road. Jim Trader, what's going on on pit road? Check out the Kirchie, Bob Kazlowski. Bob, what, did, what happened on the car? Why'd you come down pit road? Come back, come back. Why'd you come down, Bob? Well, we're just not working. That last set of tires is terrible, and uh, I'm just trying to combat them. Uh, we only got the two sets, and that's the set I got to live with, so. We weren't going forward very good. Backwards, starting to go backwards. So we made some air, some track bar adjustments, wedge adjustments. Hopefully that'll fix it. Otherwise, we're in trouble. Thanks, Bob. The guessing games of Father Bob Keselowski, a winner 20 years ago here at Toledo Speedway. Was also a track champion as his son in the late models at Toledo. Yeah, Brian had fallen back to the 10th position, so he really didn't have a whole lot to lose. He will restart this race possibly 13th or 14th, so he didn't really have that much to lose. As Bob said, his car wasn't going forward. They're here to win this race. They're not here to run 10th or try to finish 9th. Yeah, we mentioned that at the beginning of the show. Even if he was running second and the leader was pulling away from him, they were going to come down and make whatever changes they thought were necessary to get that car going toward the front because they want to win this race. Again, creeping around this racetrack at just 25 miles an hour. Amazing that race cars can even go that slow. It really is. They, they don't do it very well, that's for sure. <laughs> this probably, time probably will restart in first gear. Most of the racetracks we go to, they will always restart in second gear, but they're running so slow here on this racetrack. And that's all because of pit road that uh, they may restart in first gear. And we're underway. Justin South giving us the view of Frank Kimmel's back bumper as we get restarted here for the Hands Group 200 from Toledo Speedway. Right now, Justin South is Frank Kimmel's best friend because he's the only car between unless he gets underneath him again and oh, gets against him. I'm telling you, he's trying to turn. Somebody's trying to turn Frank Kimmel. It was Terry Jones earlier that got hooked underneath the bumper and got Kimmel a little bit sideways. Now it's Justin South, and we've got problems in turn two. Jason Adleski in that 0 8. He's involved in this caution, as is Philip Magilton. Yeah, there were a number of cars. There's, as you see, the 08 of Jason Hedleski, the 47 of Philip Magilton. There were several cars involved in that. A few guys did a nice job of avoiding that also. Unfortunate for the 08 on the hood of that 08, there's actually a message there. There's two pictures of two gentlemen that have been missing for a year and two years. 27-year-old Brian Schaefer has been missing since April 1st, 2006. 27-year-old Tony Luzio Jr. has been missing since July 4th of 2005. Again, those pictures are on the hood of that. That car of Jason Hedleski. Normally sponsored by Hardcore Motorsports. They put the decals over the top of that. So uh, Hardcore Motorsports also sponsoring our safety initiative, allowing them to do some advertising, trying to find those lost young men that are somewhere out there that have been gone for a year and two years now. But Central Ohio Crime Stoppers trying for any help that they can get to find those two kids. We've got 11 cautions have flown at Toledo Speedway. We'll be right back with more Green Flag Racing. Ready to turn your plain Jane cell phone into a souped up hot rod? Just log on to speedtv.com for custom wallpaper and ringtones. Satisfy your need for speed with high-octane ringtones and fuel-injected wallpapers from Speed Mobile. Log on to speedtv.com now to download your favorite ringtone and wallpaper. A great crowd on hand. We're 
taking a look at some of the spotters high atop the press box as they look down and give a little bit of advice as to some of the drivers here on the racetrack. 11 cautions have come out, so they've had to negotiate around those up to this point. Closing in on the final laps of the race, though, Phil, we're getting close now. It's 40 to go. We're going to have a real shootout. And it doesn't get any better than good short track racing. We saw Justin South get in the back of Frank Kimmel trying to get that lead away. Justin South's never won one of these races. Frank Kimmel's won, what, 67 or 68 of them. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm telling you, what, what action and what excitement here on these short tracks in the Arca Remax series. Hey, Don, have you caught up with Bill Kimmel, uh, brother to the and crew chief for Frank? Actually, he wanted to be on TV so bad he caught up with me. How about that? <laughs> Bill Kimmel? A uh, little different strategy this year. You were leading inside of 30 laps last year. You came in for a pit stop. It cost you. Looks like you're going to stay out this year. Well, there's more cars on the lead lap, Don, and uh, our weekend hadn't gone very well. We just don't want to get back in the traffic. So um, we figure if it don't hold up and they get a run on us, um, it's harder to pass us than it is for us to get back up right now. But. Uh, Hands group car, port forward, running off the good right now, so we'll just take what we got. How about the 59 car behind you? He seems rather assertive. Well, if, if we can make it through the first couple of laps, it seems okay, so um, I'll be, if we keep him at bay for a couple of laps, I think we'll be fine. Hey, nice job uh, putting the decals on the backup, buddy. Excuse me? Nice job putting the decals on the backup, that from Phil Parsons. Yeah, it seems to be doing okay right now. We had a lot of, a lot of help from the guys upstairs, so uh, if we just keep it rolling, we'll be okay. You need shade. I cut myself a little bit, so uh, I got some stitches I can't shave until I get That's near the juggler. Yeah, we've been running so bad, I set up there and stabbed myself with scissors, <laughs> so I can't do that right now. You need to stop that. I, I know. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Get all the sharp objects out of Bill Kimball's hands right now. Take a look again at what you were just talking about and what Don was talking about with his contact with Justin South and Kimmel. Yeah, he was very slow entering turn number three, and Justin drove right up on him, made a little contact with the left rear corner. As Bill said, after a couple laps, when things stabilize, Frank is able to move out to a little bit of a lead. Again, that's on Justin South, who does has equal tires to Frank Kimmel. But if Kim Butler, the third in the 22, or the 52 of Ken Schrader ever get by, Justin South and get on Frank Kimmel. They, they've got a lot fresher tires. It's going to be very, very interesting. One lap until we get to the green flag. And let's go down quickly to Jim Trader. Hey, you guys, Eddie Sharp has two cars in the top five, the 22 and the two. The 22 is Ken Butler, the third. His crew chief just said if we get more laps without all these cautions, I think we'll have something for him. Same word out of Michael McDowell's pit with his crew chief, Patrick Donahue. They said if we get five or ten laps straight here, I think we can get around Schrader and challenge the front guys. So we'll see if they get a long green and how strong they can be because they, uh, they are very confident in their dodges. You know, it's amazing at the very top of the show, we talk about the domination of Ken Schrader and Frank Kimmel here at this racetrack. We talk about all the young guns here with an opportunity to maybe unseat them. Well, we've got Kimmel leading. We're talking about Schrader having fresh tires, but in that mix, we've got three young guys too. Exactly. Justin South has never won a race in the Arca Remax Series. His best finish, a second at Salem back in 2004. Green flag back out at Toledo Speedway. Boy, Frank gets a great run on the restart here. Let's see if he can get down through three and four a little bit harder this time than he did the last time. That allowed Justin South to gain up, or gain ground on him and they actually make contact. Justin South right up behind him as they've completed a lap since the, the caution flag has been taken away, but we've got problems with Justin Allgaier on the top of the racetrack in turn four. He gets it going again. Looks like a right front tire is flat on the 16, so he will make his way to pit road. We stay green right on the back bumper of Frank Kimmel and Justin South. Well, Justin Allgaier will take a big hit in the points with a screen flag pit stop right here, but Justin South is all over the back of that 46 of Frank Kimmel. And Ken Butler the third is starting to reel those two in, and so Ken Butler the third looking for his first win in the Arca Remax series. And he has had a fast car this entire race. Had great pit work both times on pit road. He won the race on pit road. He beat the 52 of Ken Schrader off the pit road. That's why he's third in Kimmy Sport. Jim Trado talked about it. Michael McDowell all over the back bumper of Frank or of Ken Schrader now, too. So your top five is really tight. We've got a problem in turn number three, though. Cars turned around. Caution out once again. 12th caution of the day. Todd Bowser involved in this. It looks like the 18, who was having such a great run, Billy Leslie involved, and the six of Dexter Bean. Yeah, a lot of Dexter Bean third in points coming into this race. There's the 29 of Brian Keselowski. He also got a piece of that. It spun down to the inside of the racetrack. Doesn't appear to have that much damage, but 
A lot of damage to the right rear corner of that six of Dexter Bean. So the safety crews will make their way out to the outside of the racetrack in turn three or the top line up against the wall. There's some debris up there. They'll have to get that cleaned off. Every one of these caution laps is working in Frank Kimmel's favor. Every caution lap is one less green flag lap that he doesn't have to run, have older tires than does Ken Schrader and Kim Butler the third. We're going to take a look at somewhat the end of what just took place to bring out our 12th caution. Up against the wall. They've already made the contact. Extra Bean. It was another car that managed to drive away. Then the 21 of Todd Bowser and the 18 of Bill, Billy Leslie looked like they made some contact getting in turn three. Yeah, it looked like that was take that that really all was initiated on the back stretch, and it just ended up in turn three is where everybody they just uh, was landed. Wadded up. They yeah. just landed in turn three. So the safety crews pulling the debris away from the wall and off the track. Take a look at our points right now, Phil. Yeah, you see Justin Algar came into this race only 20 points behind Frank Kimmel, but with that green flag pit stop, it's dropped him now back to third, 115 points out of the lead. It moves up Bobby Gerhardt to second, 105 points out. Bobby Gerhardt and brother Billy, his crew chief, talked about testing here in Toledo because they want to run for a championship. And that's exactly what they're trying to do today with a strong finish here right now. They're being scored in the sixth position just behind Michael McDowell. So Bobby Gerhardt with a strong run here at Toledo. Yeah, Bobby had a good run at Winchester. That was his best short track finish of the year. He finished four, and so maybe be able to put two good short track finishes back to back here. Frank Kimmel on the outside. On the inside, the slower lap traffic of Brian Silas, and just behind him, the 65 of Justin Marks back out of turn four and back underway. 30 laps to go. We're going to wait through one and two. I'm telling you, the car I'm keeping my eye on is that 22, that 22 car of Kim Butler the third. I think he has the best car in the racetrack right now. Kim Butler the third, and here comes Justin South looking to the inside of that 46 of Frank Kittle. Frank, and he makes the pass. Frank gives him some room on the inside, this side by side off the two. Justin South trying to get by Frank Kimmel. Eight time series champion Frank Kimmel, that is. Justin South working his way on the inside, and here comes Ken Butler the third also. Justin South does take the lead, and he opens the door for Ken Butler the third. Remember, pressure tires on that 22 car. Two drivers that have not won in the Arca Remax series are now running one and two with just 27 laps of racing to go when they cross the start finish line. What a great move by Justin South. Drove up underneath that 46 car, Frank Kimmel. Justin South out in front. Don, what's going on with the team? Well, we know the 22 car is on pressure tires. Such is not the case for the 59, the HD supply Dodge of Justin South. They last hit it, get this, on lap 75. He's hanging on for dear life. Butler wants to eat it for lunch. Frank Kimmel having problems. He's dropping back through the field. Gerhardt tried to get by him. He was not able to. Frank Kimmel moved all the way up very high. And here comes Ken Butler, the third. He'll make the pass. He takes over the top spot. What a great move on the inside by the 22 of Ken Butler, the third. Takes over the lead here with 25 lots to go. Michael McDowell has also moved by Ken Schrader. And so now three guys looking to find their first victories in the Arca Remax Series are one, two, and three. Two of them have rookie stripes on the back bumper. We've talked about the newcomers, and here they are running one, two, three. Look at Michael McDowell on the inside. Go for a second. That's a battle for second. He takes it away from Justin South. And now it is Ken Butler, the third, and Michael McDowell, one, and two across the start finish line. Hey, how about this day for Eddie Sharp Racing? Right now running one, two. Yeah, and with Michael McDowell, as I mentioned before the race, he talked about he would trade all of his poles in for one win. And it could come here at Toledo Speedway if he can reel in that 22 of Ken Butler the third. But he's got to get by his teammate to do. Justin South continues to run third. You can see Michael McDowell started on the pole. Lowest spot of the day was 11. He was up, back up to second now. 
These two running very strong right now. Kim Butler the third, Michael McDowell has put about six car lengths between Justin South, actually stretching that out on the back stretch. Then it's Ken Schrader and Frank Kimmel. Again, Ken Schrader and Frank Kimmel running in the fourth and fifth positions in this race. Between the two of them, 13 wins. And they're running fourth and fifth to these young guys. I wonder if there are any team orders here for Eddie Sharp Racing. That's a good question. Ken Butler the third out in front. I'm guessing it's once the final five laps go, it's who's ever going to be fast. I mean, how are you going to tell Michael McDowell that don't go up there and try to win this race? There's no way you can tell him that. No, no. Michael McDowell's been so close before. His best finish coming into this race is a 16th, actually a third at Salem earlier this year. And so he is looking for that victory. Running second right now to teammate Kim Butler the third. cars are pretty evenly matched right there. Michael McDowell right now not able to make up a, a run at him. He's about three car lengths behind, as you can see. Justin South continues to run third. Ken Strader fourth and Frank Kimmel running fifth. Gap's been closed just a bit. Ken Butler the third. In front of Michael McDowell. Now, Eddie Sharp is actually spotting for Ken Butler the third. So, <laughs> how do you how do you tell him to block your own car? Just don't let that two car bite. That's what you tell him. That's when you have to take the owner's hat off and you're trying to win that race for the guy you're working with specifically. 15 laps of racing remaining. They go down the back stretch. Slower lap cars working into. The last few laps of this race. Kent Schrader was made, able to make the pass on Justin South to take over the third spot. Kent Schrader up to third. Working the way around slower lap traffic, it's Kent Butler the third. Michael McDowell looking for their first win. In the Arco Remax Series, we'll find out who will it be when we come back to Toledo. Welcome back to the Hands Group 200 from Toledo Speedway in Toledo, Ohio. The caution has come out, so you only missed about two laps of racing, actually. It's the 13th caution of the day. The 32 got turned around on lap 187, and so our 13th caution came out for Matt Merrill, who had a good run going earlier, now being scored two laps down. There's only 11 cars on the lead lap out in front of this field. It's the 22 of Ken Butler the third. Let's go down to Jim Trado. Standing by with Butler's crew chief, Jeff McClure. Jeff, what is your young driver saying? You got what you wanted. You got the long green run to get the lead, but now what's the strategy? We just got to try to stay on the bottom. McDowell, our teammate, he's just as good as we are. Just, it's going to be down to whichever one of them makes a mistake. Either what, one of them could get it. What's the boss saying on the radio? He's spotting for you guys. <laughs> yeah, we got the boss man actually on the roof for us today, but uh, he lets us race. I mean, this. It's just good to have both cars up front right now, but of course we want to win it, but teammate's mighty good too. He, he's going to be tough to hold on. Thoughts of Christie's Jeff McClure down here for Ken Butler the third, who did take a walk down to talk to Patrick Donahue under this caution. There Patrick, Don Patrick Donahue is the crew chief on Michael McDowell's car, so uh, there are your spotters right there high atop the speedway. You know, Eddie Sharp. Eddie Sharp, obviously, he's on pins and needles right now. He's running one, two, but he wants to make sure that he finishes one two and it probably doesn't matter to Eddie right now yeah, which, which one? one Michael McDowell four poles he started on the pole here today the yellow rookie stripes on the back of both cars Ken Butler the third Michael McDowell running one and two behind them some yeah, a little seniority. bit of experience a little yeah. bit of experience behind them with Ken Schrader and the 46 of Frank Kimmel running third and fifth respectively Jim Trado the teamwork earlier guys with well, the two team is just saying to their driver hey Michael we know the 22 is not going to give up the bottom he's going to stay on the bottom so you need you need to know what you need to do so the teamwork's working both ways they know what the leader's going to do so look for McDowell to go up top or possibly Jim he may move him uh, I mean that's a situation <laughs> where you've got uh, Ken Butler the third out in front if he knows that he's going to stay on the bottom a little bumper gets him up the racetrack and he passes him. I, I, I've seen that before. <laughs> We've seen I, it I here really at this have. racetrack yeah. a few times. <laughs> Next time by, they will receive the green flag. Seven laps of racing when they come to the start-finish line. 
Actually, when they come back to start finish line, only six laps to go in this one. A shootout from Toledo Speedway for the Arca Remax Series. You know, Michael McDowell has a lot of road racing experience. He's won in the Rolex Series. He was a star Mazda champion, so he's got a lot of experience. He knows how to win. He just hasn't quite done it yet in the Arca Series, but he's knocking on the door right now. Yeah, one of the things, Michael McDowell led some laps here at the beginning of this race. He was on the pole, didn't lead the first lap. Justin Algar had a great start. And Michael McDowell worked his way back up to the front. He led laps. Michael McDowell currently second among all drivers in laps led in 2007. So Michael McDowell looking to cash in all those laps led by leading the last lap of this race. But he's got to get by his teammate, Ken Butler the third. The green flag flies. Six laps of racing to go. He's all over him. Gonna try to get underneath him. He does. He does get underneath him. Here he goes into turn number three. Michael McDowell takes the inside line. Kid Butler, the third, runs on the high side. They're side by side as they come out of turn number four. He clears it. Michael McDowell takes over the lead. Out in front, the caution flag is oh, trouble once again. Problems with Michael McDowell also spinning. Guess what happened? The 22 of Kim Butler, the third, got into the back of his teammate, Michael McDowell, and turned him around. It felt an amazing situation here. They went into turn number one, and just as they were getting into one, the caution flag came out, and so they saw the light, but the accident actually took place in three and four. Don Radovan. Uh, go whole thing was really a shame. Michael McDowell made a very clean pass on the 22 car, then heading back into turn one, just as you saw it happen right in front of me. I'm standing down here on pit road, right smack dab in front of me. The 22 just drilled the two and turned them. There's nothing more to it. Let's see if we can take a look back at what happened exactly. We have to remember now, there was a caution flag coming out from a wreck. Watch this. Michael McDowell just gets turned around, getting in the corner. He wanted to make sure he stayed on the bottom of the racetrack. And the 22 of Kim Butler the third ran in the back, but you wonder if the caution flag was in fact out. Did he slow down Phil, because the caution flag being out? You know what, Phil? I, I, I don't, I don't want to question Don here, but there's no damage to the back of that number two. He it got looks run like, into. It looks like he got spun around right there. He just about picked his rear wheels off the ground. He got run into, Rick. How does that not? How does that what? damage the back of that car? Well, it, it doesn't matter. The front end of that 22 car ran into the back of that two car. That's why he turned around. So, because of turning his teammate around, Ken Butler the third is now in front of the field. And we're seeing Michael McDowell make his way up to the inside. And, and will they bring him back up to second because the caution has come out? Well, if NASCAR, you know, said, or the, if, if, our, if the ARC officials say that, uh, you know, that the caution flag was in fact out when that happened, they may elect to bring him back up there, but he's back and back up. Let's look again, Rick. I want you to see this contact here. Don, it was right in front of Don Watch. Here they go. That's Michael making the clean pass. Watch them as they drive down in the corner. You see the back of the car lift up yep. Yep. when the 22 of, of Kim Butler III made the contact. Michael McDowell almost saved his car. At the very last second, he lost, lost it. Don, what's going on down there? Yeah, you, you're all over it, Phil. I, I don't know the angle you guys are seeing from your point of view, but from mine, it happened directly in front of me. And he actually, uh, the 22 actually lifted the two off the ground. It was, uh, it was that good of a punch. Michael McDowell still trying to figure out where he fits into this line. We're going to see a green, white checkered finish. Okay, we've completed 198 laps, so when they come back around now, will we get the green and the white at the same time? That's the question. We are going to get the green and the white, so we will have one lap of racing when they get back around here. And this is so that we can conclude the race at the the advertised distance as far as 200 laps, 100 miles. And it will all be in the hands now of Ken Butler the third. Well, Ken Schrader saw that Michael McDowell was able to pass him on the inside. Let's see if he takes advantage of that knowledge. The green flag flies. We're underway. Here comes Schrader on the inside. Gets into the back of Ken Butler the third as they go down the back stretch. Ken Butler the third just in front of Ken Schrader. Working their way down the back stretch into three. His last effort. Can he get on the inside of him? It's Ken Butler the third winning the hands group 200. Right behind him, cars spinning all over the racetrack. 
The 25 of Billy Venturini is involved. The 26 of, uh, I'm sorry, that's the 28 right there of Mike Buckley. He's also involved. Well, Let's take nothing away from the no. fact that the, that the 22 of Kim Butler III wins his first ARCA Remax race, but there will be a little controversy, certainly within that team. Definitely within the team. And, and I'm guessing right now he's got to feel he's got to feel good about who he raced at the end of this race. He was able to hold off Ken Schrader, who's won this race four times. He was a very dominant car. We talked about that in the early times of this race. But the question is, what will the fallout be between he and Michael McDowell? He spun him to take over the lead. Coverage of the Arca Remax Series from Toledo is presented by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. Brought to you in part by Hardcore Motorsports, proud sponsor of the Hardcore Motorsports Arca Safety Initiative. Let's go down to Victory Lane and Jim Trado. Come on out. And out of the car comes Ken Butler the third. His crew has joined him in celebration. Ken Butler in his fourth arc of start has found Victory Lane in the Hands Group 200. He's going to jump in. His crew chief, Jeff McClure's arms. And Ken, i got to ask you quickly, talk about how strong that car was all day. That car was just unbelievable. Uh, i got to thank the Domino's team. We've had a... But I, first thing I want to say, I'm sorry for McDowell. I hate that, I hate that for him. I just came there hot and he... I don't know, I just hate, I hate wrecking What did happen? Oh, you know, he passed me, and I got right behind him, and it looked like he either checked up, I don't know, and I was driving in too hot, but this is just awesome, man. Uh, great team, great group effort, and I don't know what else to say. This is just awesome. Ken, as far as the race goes, you had a strong car. You had to hold Kenny Schrader off at the end as well. Oh, my God, that was the most nerve-wracking thing, you know, two laps in my life. So, you know, this is the first time I haven't won in so long, so I don't even know what to expect. Uh, what do we do now? <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, hand him the trophy. Don? Well, let's see. Michael Muldowell, you're just a few laps from winning your career first ARCA Remax Series race. Ken Butler says you checked up. What happened? No, I didn't check up. I drove him clean, and he just blasted me getting into the corner. You know, it's a real shame. And, you know, the Eddie Sharp Racing, uh, both cars were running up front, and, you know, I ran him clean there on the restart and got around him. And you know, it's a real shame for Z-Line Design, Michigan Residential, Make-A-Wish car. And, you know, just real upset for all the people that support me, like Rob Finlay. And, you know, we had our first win here, and we drove it clean, and, and we got wrecked, and it's just simple as that. What did you say to Ken Butler in Victory Lane? You were one of the first to uh, land on the scene. Yeah, I just wanted to congratulate him. You know, he did an awesome job, and, uh, you know, we got a lot more races together, and, and hopefully we'll turn it around or turn him around, whatever. <laughs> we're talking about teammates here. Uh, interesting how that would all shake down. You might expect that from someone else, but maybe not a teammate? Well, you know, it's uh, it's short track racing. It's good, fun, hard racing. And, you know, it's all right to get on someone's bumper, get them a little loose, and, and you drive underneath them. But he, he just plowed me. There was no stopping it. So uh, it's unfortunate. And like I said, the uh, number two Eddie Sharp Racing uh, Z-Line Design Dodge was good. And we'll get it back up in the front. We'll keep an eye on it. Up to you guys. And we take a look at our unofficial results. Ken Butler the third, becoming the eighth different driver to find victory lane in eight races for the ARCA Remax Series. Ken Schrader, an impressive performance today, coming home second. Yeah, Justin South had a great run, finishes third. Frank Kimmel, our point leader, finishes fourth. And Michael McDowell ends up finishing seventh. What, what a horrible break for Michael McDowell. You can feel for him. I've been in that position. I know exactly what he feels. And, and it makes it that much worse that it was your teammate. Only the top 10 finishing on the lead lap today. Rob Brent in the double zero first off the racetrack. Let's go back down track side to Jim Trado. The runner up is Ken Schrader. Kenny, you had an awesome, awesome strong car running with Frank Campbell, but that finish had to be pretty something awesome to see as well. Well, <laughs> I figured something exciting was going to happen. Uh, and it did, but you know, just not enough. How about your race car? Would you have something if it maybe had three or four more laps? Oh, I don't know. If I just had a little better attitude, I'd park him. Uh, just, uh, just don't like the way he won it, you know? I mean, it's, I mean, it didn't take nothing away from us, but just the other car, you know, the two car did a good job. And uh, just get dumped. It's just, that's not the way you're supposed to race. And if anyone knows, guys, it's Schrader. Most definitely a veteran of not only Arca Remax Series, but right here at Toledo Speedway. The impressive finishes that he has had. Another driver with impressive finishes, Frank Kimmel. 80-point lead over Justin Allgaier. Bobby Gerhardt moves to third in the point standings. Dexter being fourth. And Justin South 
in the fifth position, Phil. Well, we had a typical short track race here at Toledo. We had a lot of beating and banging. We can Michael McDowell passed his teammate clean for the lead. And as Kenny Schrader said, he got dumped when he got down to the next corner. So caution's coming into play at this racetrack once again. The victor, though, Ken Butler III, winning his first ever ARCA Remax Series race.